Okay. Okay, I'd like to call the uh, Court of Revision meeting to order, roll call. I believe everyone here is present that is on the Court of Revision for members of council. We also have administration uh, attending. I'd like to begin with the land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we are on land and surrounded by water originally inhabited by indigenous peoples who have traveled this era since time immemorial. This territory is within the lands honored by the Wampum treaties agreements between the Anasheba, Andunesi, Leni, Lavapat, and allied nations to peacefully share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Specifically, we would like to acknowledge the presence of the Three Fires Confederacy, Ojibwe, Udawa, Parawatami, and Huron Wende peoples. We are dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture while remaining committed to moving forward respectfully with all First Nations, Inuit, and Metis. Are there any disclosure of pecuniary interest from members of council? Seeing none, we'll move on to E, introduction and purpose of meeting. Before I do that, I'd like to call upon Mr. Bartnick, who would like to uh, uh, formally announce a new appointment with the town. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, uh, and to members of the Court of Revision and, and, the, uh, and the public. I uh, just wanted to introduce our recent hire. He started here a number of weeks ago, but I believe this is kind of his first um, appearance uh, in front of council and in front of the courts. Uh, it's Mr. Joseph uh, Lapalainen, and uh, he is our uh, new assistant uh, drainage superintendent. And uh, so he will be assisting with all drainage matters uh, as part of the division and uh, assisting uh, the drainage superintendent who is uh, Alessia Musio. So I wanted to give that introduction. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then turn it back to you, uh, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you and welcome aboard, uh, Joseph. Uh, so tonight, the introduction purpose of the meeting is to hear from any affected owner who wishes to appeal his or her assessment or any part thereof as set out in the drainage report prepared by Josh Warner, professional engineer and R. Dobbin Engineering Inc. dated May 18th, 2022. But this time I'd like to turn it over to Alessia if she kind of gives a little bit brief background. Uh, and also we have a delegations afterwards, uh, Mr. Farrell. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, on July 12th of this year, Council approved the technical aspects of the drainage report at the meeting to consider. And at that meeting, we had two delegates who expressed their concerns about the proposed buffer strips in the report. Um, it was explained to the delegates how the buffer strips are outlined in the town's official plan as well as enforced by IRCA and OMAFRA. And the main reason for buffer strips is because they help uh, the, to control silt and sediment buildup in the bottom of the drain, um, which ultimately lowers the amount of maintenance we need to do on the drain and that saves the landowners money. Um, so as outlined in the report, the buffer strips that are being proposed are to be maintained by the landowners. Um, as uh, your worship mentioned, the court of revision is just to, um, to voice any of your concerns or comments about your assessment. Um, we've had one delegate, Mr. Farrell, who is here tonight, and Mr. Josh Warner, who uh, was the engineer appointed for this project, could not be here tonight. Uh, so Mr. Ray Dobbin uh, has filled in for us and he can help with any questions or concerns about the assessment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Mozio. Uh, at this time, um, are there any questions from members of council or on the Code of Minimum members? We'll go to delegations then to Mr. Wayne Farrell. You turn your mic on, I believe, and you'll be able to uh, speak to the Court of Revision. Uh, there, uh, is it on okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just what I'm uh, concerned about is the uh, ditch was dug uh, Two years ago, I believe. Uh, since that time, brush is growing up all over the uh, ditch bank, and the weeds were about three feet high. And uh, to go in at this time and and uh, uh, try to spread grass seed onto it uh, is definitely uh, not going to. Um, on the best of times, 
uh, the grass seed doesn't catch uh, usually on the sides of the banks. And, and uh, that should have been done after the uh, ditch banks were first uh, excavated. And uh, by doing it now, I think that's just a waste of uh, time and money. That was my main concern uh, with the uh, <clears throat> edges of the uh, ditch, the um, uh, what you're calling um, the buffer strip. Um, I don't feel that that is uh, a real necessity. If a farmer knows what he's doing, he's not running his equipment down the side of the ditch and filling the ditch back in. And for me to have to uh, maintain that uh, strip, uh, it's not attached uh, near my residence. So that means I'm going to have to haul a um, uh, lawnmower or something to maintain that uh, strip at uh, my cost. Whenever the township does any uh, trimming along the banks, uh, they uh, put that into a uh, maintenance fee against me. So I'm just saying, why should I be looking after something on my own property that user are enforcing uh, for me to look at without some type of compensation or lifetime compensation. As long as that is there, uh, I'm losing uh, production area in my field, plus uh, having to maintain it so it doesn't fill up with weeds. That's my main concerns. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions from the uh, members of the Court of Revision? Councilor to Jobin? Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I don't know if this would go to Mr. Bartnick or maybe Mr. Dobbin. Um, Mr. Farrow is not the first of the farming community to raise this, um, maybe first in a quarter revision process, but um, buffers are becoming more common. And yes, uh, OMAFRA and IRCA regulations um, and yes, we understand the sediment and even chemicals getting into the natural waterways. Um, and the definition is kind of being compared to the north end, like a boulevard in between a sidewalk space. If the resident wants to maintain it, they maintain it, that's fine. Um, but in, in this case, in the farming community, they're losing workable lands that they were profiting from. Uh, a resident in the urban center isn't losing a profitable piece of property. Not only are they losing profit from their yield, they, in addition to, have to maintain this three meter. Yes, some do, and it looks fantastic, and some don't, and it looks ugly along a stretch of a beautiful crop. So <clears throat> I feel like if we can consider removing the buffers or um, even coming back with maybe a little more of a defined definition on how I can even communicate it, not just to Mr. Farrow, but a number of farmers. And you'll see it if you come out this area, it's becoming a big thing. Farmers are saying, I'm paying more in fuel like everybody else. Yes. Um, but this piece of grass in between their crop and the ditch bank, they either have to maintain it where there is a double loss now, cost to maintain it and loss of their yield. I was hoping that maybe, I don't, I don't know if we could come back to this with a better definition and how we can convey it, not just for Mr. Farrow, but for all the farmers in the community. Okay, I think uh, Mr. Dobbin, do you wanna take a response to uh, Councillor Jobin's uh, concern there and, and maybe I some can, genesis on why it, it is what it is right now? Um, I, I can speak to some of the history of it. I have um, worked on buffer strips and other municipalities to establish them. Uh, we don't always get them established. Um, but I have walk drains where a fella has, has a buffer strip. The grass is two or three feet tall. It's all grass. And I can see where his old erosion washouts in the ditch are now grass and no longer work. And I walk to the next farmer who sprays his ditch banks and he's got all the half his ditch bank down the bottom. So I know buffer strips do work for certain farmers that don't maintain the banks. They, got, they work right up to the edge and hang their cultivator over. Um, as far as buffer strips, um, I've got buffer strips on all my properties. Um, I put them in 
eight feet wide because that's how wide the tractor and chopper is. I maintain them uh, and cut them. And I have noticed a difference on my properties uh, with the buffer strip, but uh, it's it's still in the municipalities, all the municipalities you work with, it's still policy in some municipalities and not all municipalities. So we don't put buffer strips in every drain we work on right now. It's kind of more local policy. Um, I've seen the good of them, so I'm in favor of them, but uh, we don't always do them. And, and as far as cutting them every, I cut mine on a regular basis, but I have yeah. seen other ones that are pure grass and we just let them, let it grow as grass and, uh, and you got a good catch of grass, you don't get the weeds in it. So uh, I assume he sprays the grass when he puts weed in, but um, but yeah, it does make a difference in, in maintaining the uh, fertilizer in the field and preventing that little bit of erosion on your field. Uh, I mean, a foot of free, a foot of buffer strip is almost as good as five feet as long as you've got something there because if you don't have anything at all, it's trouble. Okay, and so just to review, uh, uh, Phil, uh, what do we have here in this, in this, how many feet? I know you're proposing the buffer, but what's it presently? I think it's five feet. We're proposing five feet in the report, I believe. Yeah, it's 1.5 meters. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bartnick, you had your hand up? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And um, just wanted to provide, I guess, a few additional comments as well. I know Ms. Musso um, kind of touched on it in our opening statements about, you know, the town's official plan and, and a lot of the best management practices that we're seeing now coming out of, uh, you know, conservation authorities and OMAFRA. Um, we are seeing them more and more in Essex County uh, within the region uh, and other areas. Uh, it, it does take a while to establish these uh, buffer strips on all drains because really the timing of it is when you're undertaking a section 78 report. And so it's covered under the bylaw. And, and sometimes these bylaws are good for 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, and so there's some instances where buffer strips would be a good solution on some drains. However, the, the reports and the bylaws are valid and there's no reason for the municipality uh, to go back and, and, and reopen that. And so as the as municipalities in Essex County, I think what we're seeing is as these 78s come forward, um, these drainage practitioners and the drainage engineers are, are taking a hard look at these, you know, the local policies and the best management practices and trying to incorporate them um, on these municipal drains. Um, I'll just give a personal um, uh, thought out uh, as well. You know, uh, this past summer, I did uh, a lot of staycation in southwestern Ontario. Um, and unfortunately, the engineer in me uh, made me review a lot of the roadside uh, ditches and drains as I drove, uh, you know, uh, Chatham Kent, uh, as well as Lambton County. Uh, and I was uh, making a lot of notes on uh, how frequent uh, these buffer strips are, are now becoming. Um, and, and again, the benefits of uh, you know, uh, redu reduction in sediment uh, and uh, within the drain, reduction in um, uh, the frequency of maintenance that would be required, um, less 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 risk of uh, bank failures with heavy machinery driving right on the top of the bank. Um, so there there are a lot of benefits, and they are out there, and they're becoming more and more, um, uh, I guess, acceptable uh, in in the in the communities and in the municipal drainage world. Phil, any other questions? Councillor Jobin? Sorry, yes, thank you. Two things then, um, through you, Mr. Chair, to maybe Mr. Dobbin again, or Phil. So Phil, you had mentioned section 78 is covered under the bylaws. So that you are saying then, if a drain is maintained under section 78, there is a benefit or cost reimbursement maybe is another way to define benefit to the landowner then only if it's done under a section 78 so currently this drain we're referring to is done under a section 78 so mr farrow and other affected landowners will be seeing a compensation of some kind because of the buffer strip yeah uh, <clears throat> through you your worship uh, thank you councillor jobin uh so typically the the drainage uh report or the engineer's drainage report would identify um, allowances for land uh, for which the uh, 
uh, buffer strip is located on. Uh, and and um, I, I believe Mr. Dobbin can go into the details of, the, of how that's actually calculated. Um, but really the section 78 is is the tool um, that landowners and, and drainage practitioners use not only one to to get it covered within the bylaw, but it gives the drainage practitioner the opportunity to um, compensate those property owners because really uh, trying to establish it, you know, under regular maintenance, uh, there is no compensation under uh, a maintenance program or a section 74. Um, and really there's no authority for the municipality uh, to go in and try to establish those buffer strips unless it is covered under bylaw or there's a there's an agreement with uh, the property owner um, as an individual who, who would like to establish that. Okay, so then to be clear, Mr. Farrow will see a compensation in this situation because it's under a section 78. Yes, yeah, I believe, yeah. oh, sorry, yep. Okay, and then second to that then, so before Mr. you go on, Councilor Joven, yep. so I think Mr. Dobbin just wanted to clarify something that. Yeah, the allowances were made in report for the buffer strip uh, under Section 29 for right of way. So it was made a, a, a 1.5 meter width by length across each property. And I think he used $30,000 per hectare as compensation for it. So there was, compensa uh, was compensation included in the report. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, second, if I could, <clears throat> Mr. Farrow's question about how the current state of the area that was already maintained and cleaned, and now um, we want to go in and reseed and plant, um, what are the next steps for that, and why would we practice it in that area? Was it because of time frame, a crop went in? Do we know, Phil? Sure, I'll uh, I'll take a stab at this, and then uh, Miss Musso could probably jump in with some more, uh, with the accurate details for me. Um, it's my understanding that you know this is not a kind of a typical um, drainage report that's being brought uh, brought forward, where uh, all of the works uh, are proposed or will be tendered. I believe there has been some works uh, identified in the report that has taken place already. There's a certain percentage, um, and then there's some. Uh, outstanding works as well. So I think the intent was to capture the works that have already been completed. I believe there was a, a culvert that was installed and some uh, excavation of the drain. Uh, but then there's still some works that are outstanding and those outstanding works would be tendered. Uh, and I believe, um, you know, the, the rest of the ditching work as well as the restoration and the establishment of that uh, buffer strip um, will will take place as part of, of, of those upcoming tendered works. Um, you know, the other thing to uh, to point out as well is, um, although some of the ditch work uh, has already taken place um, and perhaps some of the material was sidecast, uh, again, the buffer strip uh, was not, I guess, incorporated under uh, a bylaw. And so although it would have been nice to kind of spread that material and grade and, and place some topsoil and seed at that time, um, there's no authority by the municipality uh, to do so. Oh, I... So I just need clarification on that, Phil. So then we just left it and now we're going back to do it? Uh, I believe uh, I believe the works were I, I believe there was some excavation uh, that was taking place and then uh, some of the um, uh, the soil was spread out uh, but I th there are some still some outstanding works um, and again I think the works that were completed were um, one to help facilitate I believe the installation of that culvert and provide um, flow within the drain right so it really wasn't uh, a kind of like a full project of you know full restoration it was okay what do we need to do in order to um get flow moving in that drain and to ensure that there's no blockages or, or no adverse impacts um uh, you know to the rest of the watershed okay thank you bill uh we have mayor mcnamara his hands up and councillor houston is next yeah thank you very much chair and uh, certainly through you to uh uh, uh, Ms. Barnick and that. Um, I had a couple of, uh, I had about four questions, but two of them I think uh, uh, 
Councilor Jobin did uh, to bring bring some of it forward. Um, I know that Mr. Farrow had, had talked about uh, you know the uh, the growth in uh, uh, within a, the uh, the ditch itself and and uh, the banking. Uh, in that, so you mentioned, I think, uh, uh, Ms. Bartnick, that uh, you know, cleaning of it is uh, uh, required and, and so forth. Uh, the one key factor, and I think that he uh, brought up, Mr. Farrow, in terms of uh, after the uh, initial um, repairs to the drain and and uh, uh, and so forth, the. Um, it kind of was left there. So the restoration piece, what's the timing of that? Like once it's done or when will it be started for that? Because we're getting late into the year and we know that uh, under fisheries and oceans, there's only a specific amount of time uh, during the year when that can be done. And that, so obviously I think that timing is gonna be critical in terms of whatever we do, the restoration piece should be, um, uh, time, you know, to follow quickly so that uh, obviously the, um, growth of uh, either phragmites or others uh, don't uh, uh, don't uh, appear. The other, the other, uh, I guess my question would be in terms of that um, the buffer strip itself. And, and when we look at it, obviously it's it's um, is that a a, a legislated Omafra piece. I'm, now I'm hearing the way the discussion was going that it isn't. It's more of a standard than legislated. And you had mentioned bylaws uh, in our bylaws and so forth. So is that a, a um, regulation through our own municipal bylaws? So I'll, the, and then I'll, I'll elaborate from, from that point. <clears throat> okay, um, uh, through your worship uh, to the mayor, um, I might call on uh, Alessia uh, for this one, just on kind of the timing, and she might also be able to provide um, some further insight on the, I guess, the percentage of construction that, that will be undertaken and perhaps the timing uh, moving forward. And then uh, I could definitely jump into part two uh, or the second question there for you with respect to the policy and, and legislation. Okay, Ms. Bosio. Oh, you're muted. Yeah, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, through your worship to the mayor. Um, only well, about... actually, I'm, I'm the worship and uh, you're the worship. I'm, I'm mayor at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds confusing. Um, yeah, so only about 27% of the work has been completed. Um, so that part of the work will not be tendered out, only the rest of the work that hasn't been completed will be included in the tender. And essentially, as soon as we get our third reading and we can make it a bylaw, we can send it out for quote, um, hopefully sooner, sooner rather than later uh, to get a, like, a jump start on it, hopefully in the fall. Um, but yeah, so uh, to go to Mr. Bartnick, um, yeah, there's only 27% completed, and then the outstanding work is the only work that will be tendered out. Does that answer? Because we are we are at the beginning of fall, uh, yeah, and, and um, we probably have uh, about maybe I don't know six weeks or seven weeks of actually growing opportunities. So, mm -hmm. so I think it's it's critical, uh, you know, that that gets uh, gets dealt with, and and. Uh, but I do understand, um, and and I guess the part is is if if, if it's a, a you know a bylaw or a regulation. But the the reality is, I understand the buffer strip, what it what it means. I think you alluded to it, Mr. Bartnick, very well. I think it's about protect you know protecting the integrity of the ditch uh, from heavy equipment and and also um, uh, you know the. Uh, the loading of uh, obviously uh, fertilizers and so forth uh, in, in, uh, in ditching. So um, so I, I do understand that it's just a width piece. I think uh, uh, the question was answered uh, in, that, uh, in that, you know, the, the rationale why that was important. Uh, so I certainly understand uh, that. And, uh, and, and also, um, Thank you, Councilor Drogon. You asked the question. I think on the section seventy-eight, and what uh, I 
I knew that there was, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, there was compensation, uh, you know, for um, for that land to to the land owner. If I may, um, in terms of like the town's official plan, we do have buffer strips in the plan. Um, so we are trying to incorporate them with the drain projects that we do um, because it is in our official plan. Um, and then in terms of like with the buffer strips, uh, reducing the amount of like pesticides and silt and sediment, um, we're looking at it from an angle of saving the landowners money so that we don't have to continuously go in and do maintenance and assess them for that maintenance every time. Um, the drain gets built up with sediment and the flow stops and then we have to go in and do all that work. Um, so that's the angle I think we're looking at too is trying to save the landowners uh, money from so we don't, we don't have to go in and maintain this drain uh, frequently. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Phil? Then we've got Councillor Houston waiting patiently. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, thank you, Your Worship. And thank you, Councillor Houston. <laughs> um, uh, just one point of clarification. Uh, again, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, you did ask about whether it was legislated or not. I do not believe it's legislated under the Drainage Act itself. Um, but as uh, Ms. Musso alluded to, uh, we do have it in the town's official plan as a policy. Um, with respect to the bylaws and some of the comments to the bylaws, it was more um once uh, once the uh, buffer strip is included in a drainage report under a section 78 it is then included as part of that drain bylaw uh, the third and final reading of the bylaw and it it really um uh permits it uh to be there right and so i think sometimes what we've seen and even on some of the the past uh, drainage projects that we've gone forward with with some of the uh, buffer strips that the farmers continue to plow right through the buffer strip right to the right to the uh, drain embankment uh but with ha with having it within the bylaw it does give uh, the drainage superintendent and uh, town administration the authority to go in and reestablish that uh buffer strip uh, because without it being in the bylaw um, there's really no authority uh, uh, to, to enter in onto those lands. Hey, thank you, Phil. Councillor Houston. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair, and, and through you to uh, Mr. Farrow. Certainly, thank you, you know, for coming out and, and sharing um, some of your thoughts and concerns. Um, uh, I, I'm certainly in favor of, you know, the buffer strips as it's been described by Mr. Bartnick. Um, you know, Miss Miss Musso, Mr. Dobbin. You know, I think there is uh, validity, and there is a there is a benefit, um, and uh, we we may be earlier on in the process here to see these um, all throughout the municipality. But knowing that it's in our official plan, and this is kind of a standard or best practice um, that we are implementing in the municipality, um, I think it cer certainly has its benefits. The one question I did have, um, just regarding the maintenance of these buffer strips, um, maybe to Mr. Bartnick or Ms. Musso, what is the expectations when we uh, uh, are, are expecting the landowners to maintain these buffers? You know, I, I can't imagine it's maintaining it like someone would maintain, you know, lawn in an urban area, but would it be to, you know, cut it uh, two feet high. Just what? What? What is the? What's the interpretation or the expectation of maintenance of the uh, meter and a half buffer strip? Um, <clears throat> through you, your worship. Um, thank you, Councillor Houston. Very good question. Um, yeah. I think I, I would hazard a guess, especially uh, listening to Mr. Dobbin uh, earlier today, with with um, you know his own experience with uh, with buffer strips, is that I would suspect that it would be um, on on the adjacent landowner uh, of how many times he wants to maintain it, what what is the look that he's looking for. Um, I suspect that also, uh, obviously, I think we're all aware. You know, the more you cut the grass, the less that the weeds are going to grow and going to take, and so. Um, you know, is there that risk that if it's left 
uh, you know, unmaintained, you know, uh, will the weeds take over? Will they kind of creep into the, into the, uh, into the crops or the yield? So I think, so I think each, each landowner, each farmer would, would view that and, 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 and look at uh, kind of their own little maintenance schedule. I don't, I don't think the town uh, has a policy on that. I don't think the, the drainage report speaks to that uh, as well. Um, but I guess as these continue to roll out and there's, and, um, and, and we bring forward more and more drainage reports, I think, you know, some further discussion with our drainage superintendents. Uh, and I know the DSAO has regular meetings and, and, uh, you know, they discuss best practices and, uh, but it's definitely a good question to ask and see what other municipalities are doing and, and really what the expectation is. Th thank you, because, you know, I'm just wondering what what is the best best practice? You know, if you, if you do let it go, um, you know, weeds can can, um, you know, grow and then get into crop. But, you know, if they want to cut it back. So, so I, I was just curious of what the what the the standard would be that we're expecting the the resident or the the landowner to you know maintain it um and, and the other question i had but you answered it earlier was if they didn't like the buffer strip and they you know farmed it or you know plowed right through it like what what, what is our recourse or how do we ensure that it's maintained so you did answer that for me so um i have no further questions all right thank you any other questions from the members okay if not, uh, right now we have, Mr. Farrell, do you have any other questions? There's a delegation there. Uh, you have your mute button still on. Is that better now? There you go, yes. Okay, uh, first of all, I only got about half that meeting. Um, it kept blinking in and out. And uh, so I really don't know what has been said. Um, the main concern, as I said, I was having is the ditch was dug a couple of years ago past my property. What you're talking about as being only 27%. That's the extended part of the east end of the, due to uh, the bridge being put in there. Uh, where my area is, as I said, that was at least two years ago that that ditch was dug there. And the weeds are growing up three feet high, and for to be going in there now and try to plant grass uh, is just a waste of money. It, it's uh, not going to establish itself whatsoever. And compensation for all of that for lifetime. So, as I said, I I only got part of this meeting, so I I'm really not sure what's been said. Okay. Well, like I say, there's. I, I know the, this meeting is videotaped. Uh, you'll be able to archive it, but it, I don't think it's going to serve you any purpose tonight if there's any outstanding questions that you had. But there are a lot of questions that were asked. And, and yeah, actually, we actually you're, you're, you're gone again. Okay. Uh, Mayor McNamara, sorry. Go ahead. Can we address the point in terms of... Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Ms. Muzio, I know that uh, you're retendering and uh, finish it. You're 27% of the project. To Mr. Farrow's point in terms of uh, when the contract will be let out and uh, can, can there be a cleanup to the portion that he's talking about um, so that uh, the proper restoration or, you know, can be done? Because it sounds to me that there's, you know, with, with the, the split in terms of uh, uh, the project, it might've been because of the bridge and so forth. Can we look at his side where it's, um, so it, it looks like it's 27% of the project and that just to clean that up so that we can restore it properly so that uh, uh, at least he's got a clean start and uh, to maintain uh, at least uh, the banking and, and so forth from the weeds. Uh, through you, Your Worship, to uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I believe we can. I think Mr. Dobbin can talk more to that, um, if that would cost extra or if it's just um, more of like a due diligence where we can just clean that up for him before the buffer strip goes in or if we just clean the weeds out. Um, Mr. Dobbin, can you add to that? Uh, yes. Um... 
I assume the X-ray materials with levels and everything on that ditch bank now has it. So I'm going to look after. Um, yeah, um, I would think that uh, the weeds could be taken care of before they plant the grass. Uh, I won't say I know exactly what that green looks like. I haven't been down to see it yet, but uh, if that's the case, to remove the weeds first to uh, before the plant grass, I suppose that can be done as part of a part of the project. Okay. Phil, uh, thank you to uh, Mayor McNamara. Um, I might take it one step further and say yes, absolutely agree uh, with you that the weeds will have to be uh, taken care of. And I draw on our uh, unfortunate experiences over here uh, in the north end of town with Manning Road Phase Two and some of the struggles that we've had with uh, grass restoration and weeds taking place. Um, and definitely learned, uh, I think, through that process that. Um, you know, spraying grass seed on top of weeds uh, will not grow uh, and that the weeds will have to be addressed, uh, perhaps the land tilled a little bit with some little bit of topsoil um, and then reseeded. So I think the expectation is if 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 the, if the drainage report or the tender calls out for the embankments to be seeded, uh, that we're going to give it its best opportunity for that seed to take. And, and I would suspect that it would it'd be hydro sealing. Yes. Thank you. Okay, hey, Councillor Jobin. And also, I would expect that wouldn't be an additional cost to the project or to the landowners. Uh, through you, Your Worship, I, I believe the, uh, well, I'll leave that to the drainage engineer to see what was included in the cost or not included in the costs. Um, if there was, uh, I guess, an allowance provided, or at least some thought uh, that this was kind of a kind of a two-stage uh, construction, and whether or not that was already incorporated or captured as part of his report. Um, I, if I may, Mr. Chair, I, I to me, you know, it's a sort of a boy name, but I, it, it seems to be an unusual process where, where you know, we started and then we had to do some other things, and there's been a delay. So I, I, I really think at this stage here that uh, it shouldn't be on uh, Mr. Farrow's uh, uh, nickel here, as they say. Uh, I think that should be, you know, the project itself. It, 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 it's in fairness. Um, you know, if it was, um, you know, done uh, as 100% of a project being complete, that's one thing. If somebody doesn't take care of it, then, you know, that, that's another issue. But this is not the case here. It almost, it almost sounds like it was an unfinished portion of it on the restoration. And, um, uh, and I think that uh, it shouldn't be on, on his uh, responsibility. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. At this point, uh, we're done with questions. Uh, I believe Do we go on to communications, uh, Jennifer. Okay, we have three communications. Uh, we can do uh, the first one, the public notice. Item two is the bylaw 2022-052. And the third one is the public works request to consider engineers report Sal Talbot Road Drain East 12. Line drink. I have a motion to receive those reports. Moved by Councillor Houston, supported by Mayor McNamara. All in favor? Questions. Are there any questions? All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Thank you. And the adjournment is in order. There'll be no further business. The September meeting, the quarter revision, be adjourned. Moved by. Councillor Jobin, supported by Councillor Houston. All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Okay, Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Farrell, for coming. Hopefully, again, you'll be able to get a lot of those answers uh, if you're able to get that video sent to you. Uh, a lot of questions were asked and, and answered by members of council and administration. And uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to Ms. Moose or Mr. Bartnick at the town, and they'll help, uh, help you understand if there's anything that you missed tonight. So with no other business, uh, the meeting is uh, adjourned and uh, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.